Hello guys, welcome back to the 15th part of the series on graphs. Hope you all are doing great. Please like the video and for more videos subscribe to the channel. As we post regularly, press the bell icon so that you do not miss out any upcoming videos. So let's get started. The topic of today's discussion is bipartite graph. We have often heard about it and always thought of it as some really complex concept which will not be easy to understand. I thought that too, but not after I have read about and understood how it really is just a plain graph split into two. Let's see what the Wikipedia definition of the bipartite graph says. It says that in the mathematical field of graph theory, a bipartite graph is a graph whose vertices can be divided into two disjoint set and independent set u and v such that every edge connects a vertex in u to v. Let's take this graph as example. This graph is a bipartite graph because we know we can make two set of vertices in the graph. Vertices in each set are not connected to each other. So a bipartite graph is a graph formed by the union of the two sets. Let's discuss the properties of a bipartite graph. A graph is called bipartite if and only if the given graph does not have an odd length cycle. A complete bipartite graph is a bipartite graph which has each vertex from one set adjacent to each vertex from another set. A subset of edges M from E is a matching if no two edges have a common vertex. A matching M is a perfect if it matches all the vertices. We must have V1 equals to V2 in order to have perfect matching. Let's deep dive into each of this property. If we take our previous bipartite graph which can be partitioned into two subsets and add one more edge into it, then we see that the graph now divided into two sets is not possible as the vertex in each set should be disjointed from each other and hence should have no relationship. So we are sure that any graph with odd line cycle is not a bipartite graph. We again take our previous example. We know it is a bipartite graph, but not a complete bipartite graph. For a graph to be a complete bipartite, all the vertex from one set should be adjacent to vertex from another set. So if we have this edge in the existing graph, then the graph becomes a complete bipartite graph. Now this property is only for matching, but very useful in matching algorithm. In the given graph, we have matching set only when there exist two edges with no common vertex. As we can see that edge between 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 do not have any common vertex, so they can be our matching edge. Alternatively, edges 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 can also be valid matching. The two matchings are shown here, one with solid lines and other with dotted lines. Extension to the same property is a perfect matching, where the number of vertices in set 1 is equal to second. This diagram shows the perfect matching for a graph with 6 vertices. There exist 15 perfect matching for the same. The algorithm used in bipartite graph are divided into 3 groups. First is testing bipartiteness, second is odd cycle traversal and lastly matching. Testing bipartiteness finds if the graph is a bipartite graph or not. We have already made a detailed video on the explanation of finding if the graph is a bipartite or not. We have explained two approaches in it and I highly recommend you to watch it. Link is at the top and also in the description below. Come back and see the other two algorithms here. The next is odd cycle traversal, which finds the minimum number of vertices to be removed in order to make the graph bipartite. In this graph, if we remove the blue vertices, then the graph becomes a bipartite graph. It is an NP complete problem and we won't be discussing its algorithm for now. The final algorithm is matching. A matching in a graph is a subset of its edges, no two of which share an endpoint. In this video, we will be discussing maximum matching, which has many applications in real life. A maximum matching is a matching of maximum size, that is, maximum number of edges. The two most common applications are personal problem and stable marriage problem. Let's discuss stable marriage problem here. This problem can be solved using gale shapley algorithm, also known as Deferred Acceptance Algorithm. Let's see what is the input and how it is defined. 
Suppose there are four pair of men and women. Men are numbered from zero to three, and women are numbered from four to seven. Now, for each man, we are given a priority for the woman in which he would likely to get married. For man one, the woman five is at the top priority, and four at the lowest priority. Same priority is given of man two for each woman. Here is a pseudo code for the algorithm. We need to loop till there are no free men left, and for each man, then we find a suitable woman. If that woman is free, then we engage the two. Otherwise, we find the current suitor of the woman and find if the new man has a more priority than the current man for the woman. If yes, then we break the engagement with the current man and marry her with the new man. Let's see how to code this in a real world scenario. Here is the whole code for the algorithm. We'll first define the priority for each of men and woman for other four men and women respectively. Then we call stable marriage function, which will return the relationship between men and women. Inside this method, we first define two array of size n. The first array partner holds the partner of the woman, and the second array engaged holds the flag if the man is engaged or not. Then we take a variable free men, which will hold the number of men which are not engaged. We then loop till there are no free men left. Inside this loop, we find the first free man and loop for all the women. We check if the current woman is already engaged or not. If she does not have any partner, then we make the man her partner and update all the variables. Else, we find the current partner for the woman and find if the new man is more likable by the woman or the current man. If she likes the new man more, then we update the engagement to new man. In this method, we find which man is more suitable for women. If the new man have higher priority, we return true, and if the current man have higher priority, we return false. At the end, we print all the relationship for all the women. When we run the code, we get this relationship. It shows which man each woman should marry. The time complexity of the algorithm is O of n square. This brings us to the end of the video. Do try to code it by yourself and let me know your experience in the comment. Would love to hear them. Also, for any query or issue, comment below. Next, we will practice 10 graph related problems. If you have any tricky question for us to solve, do put that in the comment. Don't miss out. Keep learning, keep coding. See you in the next one.